Intuitively, perhaps it would seem like the further down in the ocean you live, the smaller and sturdier your body would have to be to survive the intense pressures. But really, that isn't how it works. In fact, water pressure for the creatures that live in Earth's very deepest abysses is almost negligible, since many of those creatures are mostly made of water themselves. As such, we know even at a basic level that water does enable larger bodies. On land, it's very hard to be a giant, because gravity is constantly weighing every part of the body down. The dinosaurs managed, up until 66 million years ago, thanks to a unique physical combination, including hollow bones and longer necks. We don't have anything close to the land-lugging mega-lizards of old today. And actually, it's much easier to be massive within water. Just ask the blue whale. More broadly, we speak of deep-sea gigantism when contemplating the very largest things that the ocean has to offer, and there are two main principles which might help explain it, Kleber's Law and Bergman's Law. The first, Kleber's Law, states that larger animals are actually more efficient eaters relative to body size. This means that an animal that's 10 times larger than another, for example, doesn't have to eat an equivalent 10 times more food to survive. Meanwhile, the second, Bergman's Law, states that colder environments generally breed larger bodies than hotter ones, and both circumstances apply particularly to ocean living. In an environment so vast, it pays to be efficient with the food you take in, and, obviously, it is very cold down there. Deep-sea gigantism has been recognized since as early as the 1800s, when the naturalist Henry Nottage Mosley wrote about giant sea spiders and giant ostracods, or seed shrimps, after sailing on board an expedition that had observed them. Since then, a number of different animals have been found to grow to extreme lengths underwater. For example, almost 20 different species of giant isopod have been found on the sea floor, and these can grow 10 times larger than their regular counterparts. There's also the big red jellyfish, the 12 feet plus Japanese spider crab, the deep water stingray, the giant squid, and even a seven-armed octopus. All indications are, though, that there are likely many more giant animals and structures still hiding in the depths undiscovered. The problem is that deep sea giants, despite their size, are very hard to actually find. Naturally, they spend most of their lives in the deepest layers of the ocean but also they rarely, if ever, come up to the surface, which makes studying them difficult. In fact, a contender for the longest animal ever discovered was only found as recently as 2020. The creature, called a siphonophore, is actually a stringy colony of smaller organisms called zooids that in this instance grew to an astounding 150 feet or 45 meters long. In the modern world then, it's clear that we're still uncovering giants of the deep and will seemingly continue doing so into the future. Evidently, it's not easy to locate these animals, no matter their size, although scientists can predict some giant species that are more likely to be discovered, including invertebrates like jellyfish, more species of siphonophores, and curiously, beaked whales, all of which continue to be found at a consistent rate. For some, though, it's possible that various other, even more exciting creatures, like the mythical monsters in ancient stories, could also potentially be real. The hunt for them has previously been compared to that for the giant squid, which itself was only first realized thanks to squid carcasses washing up on the shore, rather than human capture or detection. It's tricky, though, as an even bigger monster, like the kraken, for example, would likely never cross our paths. Consider that a massive predator such as this might mainly hide beneath the ice caps or among the deepest subsurface volcanoes, and there's no sight or sign detectable. To modern minds, the suggestion that such creatures could be real might seem a stretch, but there are many accounts of sea monsters recorded by ancient sailors, some of which have been explained away, but some haven't. So we might still entertain the idea that in some cases they actually did see something. After all, scientists estimate that there could be upwards of 8 million species alive worldwide, but also that we've only discovered around 20% of them. Are the sea giants of legend among that other 80? Not all ocean giants are alive and biological, however. A vast number of mysterious monuments dot the dark and murky seafloor too. Here, what's key is that sea levels have risen and fallen throughout history leading some areas that were once on land to now be swimming underwater. And after the last ice age, ice cap melt brought the water levels up significantly. 
This means that there really are underwater cities and artifacts of past cultures hidden on Earth. For example, the mysterious Cuban underwater formation, a structure found close to Cuba at a depth of 2,000 to 2,460 feet, or up to 750 meters. These massive ruins appear to be an ancient city. Sonar images show them to continue for over a mile. And there are certain formations too, like apparent buildings and potentially even pyramids. Unfortunately, the site hasn't been thoroughly visited yet to discover more about it due to the inherent difficulty in getting there. But could this also mean that there are other underwater cities or part cities that have yet to be found, perhaps all over the world map? Of course, the most famous of these potential sites is Atlantis. According to Greek legend, Atlantis was an advanced city of people that became buried in the ocean. And although it's likely a myth, or an allegorical fable to warn against the dangers of pride, greed, and arrogance, researchers uncovered in 2022 what looks to be a brick road in the Pacific Ocean. That road has been theorized to be made up of volcanic glass, but has also been widely dubbed the Road to Atlantis, and so the legend lives on. While elsewhere, there are some important ancient Egyptian cities that may have been lost underwater too. And it's not as though there isn't a precedent for believing in these places only for them to materialize, thanks to real-world science and exploration. Consider the sunken city of Tanis Heraklion in the Mediterranean Sea. It was thought to be only legend before it was found for real in the year 2000. In Egyptian history, there's the royal lost city of Ichtawi, and one of the first capitals of the ancient empire, Thinis, that are both lost to time. But as even their original locations aren't known for sure, could potentially have been sunken. Will we one day come to know the truth behind those places as well? But finally, the distinction between man-made monuments and naturally formed ones can often be hard to see. The Yonaguni Monument in Japan, for instance, was first thought to be artificial because of its sharp edges and straight columns, but is now widely held to be a natural result of erosion. And so, there's also a number of giant natural structures that are still being discovered. In today's era, according to some measures, the largest mountain on the planet actually isn't Everest, but instead the dormant volcano Mauna Kea in Hawaii. When taken from the ocean floor to its topmost point, structures like these are the result of various underwater processes, especially tectonic plate movement, and really, seamounts, or extinct volcanoes submerged underwater, are all across the ocean, with researchers estimating that there could be hundreds of thousands of them scattered about the deep sea, many of which remain undiscovered. There are even structures called megamulians that are especially long ridges with smooth domes that form only in very specific regions of the seafloor. And the Godzilla megamulian is the largest in the world, spanning some 78 miles along the bottom of the ocean. Perhaps the only disappointment is that the real Godzilla has yet to be found. But still, according to one late 2000s study, new giant sea creatures have been discovered at a rate of at least one per year since the mid-1800s. So if that rate continues, Godzilla could be coming. Or the Kraken. Or the Loch Ness Monster. Or any of the others. At the very least, you can watch this space for more cities and structures emerging from the deep. Because that's how there could be under